This simulation provides a very generic platform for the study of elliptical orbits, and there are a lot of different parameters to look through. But the first thing I want to do is to make sure you don't harbor a very common misconception. When you first look at this orbit, it looks like an ellipse and not a circle, right? Well, it is in fact an ellipse. Sometimes even circular orbits would look elliptical if we viewed them from some angle. This is a trick you might have employed when learning to draw as a child. But rest assured that the actual motion here is elliptical, and we have a fully top-down view, if you will, on this solar system. The first thing we can do is hit play and watch the planet orbit. What do we notice? Does the planet appear to speed up or slow down as it travels around? Maybe hard to tell. Let's increase the eccentricity of the orbit so it is even more elliptical and less circular. Now I think it's pretty clear. The planet is going faster when it is nearer to the star. In fact, let's show the velocity vector and watch it grow and shrink with distance to the star. If we pause, we can actually see the values of these vectors, how fast the planet is going, how far it is from the star, and also a few relevant angles. The acceleration vector is also worth looking at. Here we see that the planet experiences greater acceleration when it is near the star and lower acceleration when far from the star. This is consistent with the notion that this acceleration is caused by the pull of gravity. Since gravity is an attractive force, this force pulls the planet towards the star and pulls more strongly when the planet is near to the star. Since the planet is already moving, this pull largely acts to turn the planet rather than speed it up or slow it down. In fact, in a circular orbit, the planet would only turn and never speed up or slow down. Here though, some amount of the pull also speeds up and slows down the planet since we're orbiting in an ellipse. A circle is easy to, descri to describe. It has a center and a radius. Ellipses are a bit more complicated, requiring us to describe a center and two dimensions, the major and minor axes. Half of the major axis is called the semi-major axis, known as A. Half of the minor axis is called the semi-minor axis, known as B. Each ellipse has two focus points. A circle can be thought of as an ellipse with both focus points at the center. The two focus points are at a distance C from the center along the major axis. In orbits in our solar system, the sun is at one focus and there is just empty space at the other. The eccentricity of an ellipse is a measure of how elliptical it is. A circle has eccentricity zero, and as the eccentricity increases, the ellipse gets more stretched out along the major axis. The ratio of the focal distance C to the semi-major axis A is how we calculate the eccentricity, and it varies from a value of zero for a circle to one, which would be like a straight line. It can be helpful to look at any physical phenomenon through a number of different lenses, one such lens is to investigate the energetics of the orbit, how potential and kinetic energy are exchanged. Let's click on Show Energetics. The kinetic energy of a planet is a measure of its energy of motion, but we have not plotted the kinetic energy here. Instead, we have plotted the specific kinetic energy, which is the kinetic energy of the planet divided by its mass. The specific kinetic energy is measured in joules per kilogram rather than ordinary joules. Why do we do this? Well, because of the special way that the force of gravity seems to ignore the mass of an object when it comes to its corresponding movement, the both the force of gravity and the inertia experienced by a planet increase with mass, and these effects cancel, which means that the mass of the planet doesn't really play a role in its orbital dynamics. So, by using the specific kinetic energy rather than the total kinetic energy, we are making a more general case applicable to all planets. We also plot the specific potential energy. Do you see it as negative? Isn't that weird? Well, you might remember when first studying gravitational potential energy that the zero level, where you call zero potential energy, is arbitrary. Only changes in potential energy matter. 
You could imagine that a system consisting of a planet and a star has a lot of potential energy. And if you pull them apart to greater separation, this potential energy would increase. If you pull them infinitely far apart, the potential energy would get bigger and bigger and bigger. So instead, we define our zero level of potential energy to be when the planet and the star are infinitely far apart. Then, if they are any closer than that, they'll have a negative potential energy compared to this zero value. The total specific energy is the sum of the specific potential and specific kinetic energies. This total amount is negative because the system is bound. There isn't enough kinetic energy for the planet to escape the gravitational well formed by the star. As the planet moves around the star, potential and kinetic energy are exchanged, but the total energy stays the same. Gravity is a conservative force, so this shouldn't surprise us. So play around and enjoy.